my name is Dr. Rochelle Newton. I am a technologist for Duke University Health Systems. Uh, this is about my third or fourth all things open talk in a while. Um, I have some slides I'm going to share with you, but I want to start off by talking about diversity and what diversity means. It's a buzzword that we use all the time. You hear it everywhere, you know, diversity, diversity and inclusion, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. In the most practical sense, diversity means just different. But in the space where we are in technology and STEM, science, technology, medicine, and math, diversity is diversity of thought, action, ideas, and persons coming together for the common good. Whatever that organization's mission is, whatever it is that they're intending to do, a small group of people intending to do, it is having diverse of everything, not just the persons, but it's diverse of everything. So I am going to share my screen with you and I wanna share my slide presentation I made for you. I'm so proud of myself uh, for doing this. It's not my strength of doing these kinds of things, but I thought I would try. So um, can you see my screen? Can you all just make some kind of noise or acknowledgement if you can see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Excellent. So um, if you look at my second slide here, can anybody tell me why you think I picked this slide? Well, okay, I won't make you wait too long. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I think I'm the only one that's allowed to actually talk to you. I'm gonna say that it's because the trees are all different. Exactly. Uh, the idea behind this, this slide is nature is our most perfect example of diversity. There is not one tree, so there's not a magnolia tree or a pine tree or oak tree or a birch tree. There are a gazillion trees. Last time I checked, there are over 1,500 different tree types that have been identified. And what's important about that is that we can have diversity by recognizing the value of each one of those trees. So why is it necessary just to have a magnolia tree or a birch tree or a cedar tree? It is because the diversity of these trees produce something for the environment that makes the environment better. So when we talk about diversity of persons, it's very important that we think about what that really means. So in pure sense, in 2015, Google released this facial recognition software. And if you're familiar with this, it was a complete bomb because every time it saw a person with a darker skin tone, it put up a picture of a gorilla. Google is a smart company. They have good intentions. So you can imagine that they did not intend for this to go that way. But what they did do is they had all people who look and think a lot alike. So I think that in a lot of ways, we need to take lessons from what's around us. So diversity of persons, diversity of thought, diversity of action. And so when you think about this in, in a more generic way, and I imagine a lot of you are much younger than I am. Back in my day, when I first came into IT, there was this thing called groupthink. Um, it's now uh, developed a negative con connotation, but groupthink back in the day used to mean that a group of people got together, think, thought about something and came to a conclusion. Sort of like what you would see in a jury trial, right? You're presented some information, you as a group of people sit around and talk and think about it and you come up with a conclusion or a result that is what you think is reasonable to what the question was that was asked. Group think moved and lost its, its position uh, over time, but group think was funded by or had a foundation of the old boys network, right? So STEM, I started in STEM 1977, 98% of the people that I worked with were white men. And if you think about that in just pure population terms, what did they have in common? They're white, they were male, and probably had some moral or value systems that were similar. And because of that, a lot of what they did, remarkable work, not to understate that at all, but just some remarkable things, but they forgot about the need for diversity. And when you don't have diversity included in when your work then you're missing part of the point. 
Most companies want to be productive. Colleges want to graduate their students. Businesses want to make money. We need diversity. It cannot be anything else other than diversity. So when we think about these, these old ideas, you know, group think, homo social reproduction, he peed, the old boys club, and we're still faced today, 2020, going into 2021, with a predominantly white male culture in information technology. And with emerging technologies coming up faster than ever, we've heard a lot of talk about bias introduced into these technologies. And I'll give you the best one that I know of. So most of us, when we apply for a job in, in modern times, it goes into something called an ATS, an application tracking system. And it has certain ground rules or algorithms it's looking for, right? So if the job is for a Mac guru, an Apple guru, that must be in the CV or resume that the person has submitted. If it's said that you, it wanted you to work at a large organization that does similar things to, to that, that the current organization does, that's another one of those algorithms that's going to pick and click out. But the obvious ones are race, religion, gender, name, and college, right? So if you went to a historically black college, you're likely not going to get out of that ATS quickly unless they eliminate everybody else and you're the only person left. If your last name is a last name that's hard to pronounce or it doesn't look like it's an American name, you're going to struggle with that as well. If you are identified as uh, female, it's going to question, you know, how old are you? So are you in the childbearing age? So that may be used against you. If you are one particular religious affiliation where certain days you can't work or certain things have to change, that's going to go against you. Now, these algorithms are not intended to be true bias. What they're intended to do is to find the best candidate. But when we know what the best candidate is, it's easy to find. And in a lot of instances, large organizations best candidate is white or Asian and male. Women have made a lot of progress in STEM. We have come a long way, but there are less than a hundred women as CIOs, chief information officers in the United States. Now, when you think about that in very simple terms, why is that, right? So, you know, women are getting more college degrees than men. Women are more present, more vocal, you know, but our, our, the concept of what it means to be a woman for a lot of people seem that we're either one of two things, we're either passive or aggressive, and sometimes both passive aggressive. And so if a woman is in a meeting and she's trying to make a point and people keep interrupting her or keep you know, saying things in the middle of her presentation and she responds uh, sort of like uh, what happened the other night with Kamala Harris when she was talking to President, Vice President Pence, I'm speaking, you're assumed to be aggressive. If you become quiet and demure and, and mute yourself down, well, you don't have the tenor to be a leader because you don't speak up for yourself. To extrapolate that further, if you're black or brown, male or female, regardless to whether you say a word, there's an assumption that you're aggressive, that you are not able to maintain a certain candor and behavior that's acceptable to those who see this, who makes the decision, who sees your behavior in a negative light. With emerging technologies coming along as fast as they can every single day, black and brown people are gonna be the first group of people hit hardest by emerging technologies. So for example, cashierless retail, Sam's, Amazon, a gazillion are going to you put the app on your phone, you scan it, you press your button to pay, there's something on the wall that scans your QR code and off you go. If that had been in place prior to COVID, just imagine how many companies would not be hit as hard as they have been economically. So my whole thought in this talk and, and as we move forward is to think about 
what does it mean to have a diverse organization? And I will tell you, this is a talk I give probably once a month. Uh, when you're hiring, whether you're hiring for the janitor or the president, the people that should be on that search committee are some of the people that person will work for or work with. It should be the newest person hired in your organization. It should be the person with the least amount of experience. It should be colleagues that are on the side. So in other words, where you're managing up, managing over and managing over, those managing over people must be in the room. Having a diverse group of people, meaning their skill sets, their race, their ideas, mean you get a productive team member who will be able to contribute immediately. But if you hire only what you know, so you've got an opening for a CIO, a COO, a CTO, or senior director, whatever it is, and you only bring senior directors or like people into that room, most of them have already forgot what they knew when they first started out in this field. But bringing in that young person, bringing in that inexperienced person brings a different dichotomy to the room. So not only do you have leadership and power, but you have a person with a different point of view. So it is very important as we think about where we are in terms of diversity, that we are very clear that we cannot continue to do what we have done thus far. Separation of people does nothing but make both sides weaker. We are the United States of America. The word united carries a very powerful thing, united. Not the white America, not the black America, not the Asia America, but we are the United States of America. And yet and still to this day, we live as there are separate silos, right? There is the pine tree, the magnolia tree, the oak tree, each one lives in its own planet. They don't interact with each other together. And we all know that's not the case. It is important that we think about diversity differently and not to hire a chief diversity officer or a diversity officer if you do not empower that person to have power to do something about the issues that arise. So if you have a black person experiencing a, 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 a negative feeling or some kind of action, the diversity officer should be able to bring the person to task and then something is done because if you don't set a tone, you just condone it. You just condone the behavior over and over again. And that's why so much we see in our society that diversity is one of those things that's challenged every single day because it has no power. All the companies that say they believe in diversity, that advocate for diversity, look around. How many people in the top half of that organization are white? You don't believe in diversity if that's the case. How many people in that top half are men? You don't believe in diversity if that's the case. Diversity must be diverse. Homogeneous societies work in, on Sunday. Church, go to church on Sundays. Most churches are all white, all black, all brown, whatever it is. That's the homogeneous society. And it works for itself. But we're not trying to save our souls to go to heaven. We're trying to produce and make our company, companies and organizations productive. If you are in a position of leadership, advocate, put skin in the game. Speak for someone, help someone get to the next level. The best manager is the manager that is grooming his or her replacement. And her replacement or his replacement does not necessarily have to look like them for whatever the reason may be. So we ta I talked a little bit to you about uh, facial recognition, but this slide kind of gives you a sense of where we are in technologies. So we have the internet of things, we have data analytics, we have robotics, we have machine learning, artificial intelligence, FinTech, all of these things. Everyone that's out there today has a built-in bias. It's bias for or bias against someone. It's time for us to stop talking about this and start doing something about it to start advocating and supporting one another. Women should be looking for other women to join them. Your ideas should be shared, not just you're in charge and you go back and give a report. Well, here's what I did. Here's what my team did. Here's what the people that I work with have done. Men, the same thing. You should be mentoring men across all spectrums. 
whether they're black, white, blue, green, or brown, regardless of what their sexual orientation is, their religion is, where they live, we need to consider diversity as it's important to the bottom line as the people who do. Diversity is not just a word. It's just not a feel good thing that someone feels good at the end of the day because, oh, we've hired a diversity officer or we've hired two black people in this group. So I, after Mr. Floyd died in May, I started doing diversity chats. I have a YouTube channel and I started doing chats. I think I've done 188 to date. And I had someone tell me um, that in order for black people to be safe, this is in results to law enforcement and, and killing black men, that they needed to be with their white friends every day. And so I asked that person, so when it's time to go home, go eat, I'm supposed to come spend the night with you or are you supposed to come spend the night with me? That's how I'm going to stay alive. We must undo these thoughts and these ideas people have about what diversity means. The fastest growing segment of the population are mixed race people. They are outpacing Latinos. They're outpacing whites. They're outpacing every group out there, mixed race. By 2040, according to the Pew Center, there were going to be parity. There will be no pro-white, no pro-black, no pro-anything. All groups will be almost on a level playing field. For us to do more with diversity, we must be inclusive in our thoughts and intentional in our actions. We must not second guess a decision that's there. You must speak up. As John Lewis said, you must get into good trouble. That doesn't mean you are aggressive. It doesn't mean you're threatening. It doesn't mean you're challenging people in the way they work and how they do things, but it means that you are committed to change. Tell your story, share your story and let no one mute your voice. Maintain decor and sanity. No yelling and screaming, no need to be threatening someone. It's just tell your story and tell your story in the best way you can without antagonizing the person that you're talking to. And then when you encounter stereotypes, call it right then and there. Don't go home, don't sleep on it, don't think about it. Because if you don't, you have given that person permission to do it again. There are certain words that should be forbidden from the English language, like the N word, you know, there are ways that we use words that bring results. If we want it to be different, we must be different. We must be empowered within ourselves to work together and not see the person sitting next to you as black or white, gay or straight, male or female. We must all be present as a community because it takes a community to bring us to our ultimate result. Thank you.